gross income. Okay, we'll look at the introduction, gross income definition, resident, the components of the definition, court cases, and the capital in nature component. The tax framework shows that the top there income is gross income less exempt income and gross income is comprised of the general definition of gross income which we'll look at now and at a later stage stage we'll discuss special inclusions so gross income Taxable income is calculated as follows. It's the gross income plus the special inclusions, less exempt income, less allowable deductions, plus the taxable capital gain. That equals the taxable income. And an amount must be included in gross income before it can be subject to tax. And it can be included either by the general definition or, as I said, the special inclusion rules. Okay, resident, we will in this <clears throat> concentrate on, on South African residents, but it applies to residents of South Africa and non-residents. And residents of South Africa are taxed on their worldwide income and non-residents non are only taxed on the income they receive from a South African source. That will be dealt with under non-residents. Okay, then tests to determine whether you're a resident, there's the ordinarily resident test. And in the Cuttle and Cohen cases, Cuttle was ordinarily resident in the USA, although he also had a home in South Africa. And Cohen, that is, court held where a person returns to after his wanderings is where his re ordinary residence is. In, in Cohen's, Cohen's case, that was South Africa. Okay, the physical presence test, if you can't determine the ordinary residence, then the person must be present in South Africa more than 91 days in each of the current and the five preceding tax years. So it's more than 91 days in each of those years. And in total, the person must be resident in South Africa for more than 915 days in all of the five preceding tax years together. So if that applies, then the person will be deemed to be a South African resident. Okay, the definition, the components, it's in the case of any resident, the total amount in cash or otherwise, so there must be an amount and it must be in cash or otherwise, it doesn't really have to be cash, received by or accrued to or in favour of such a resident, during such year or period of assessment and excluding receipts or accruals of a capital nature. Okay, some court cases. When you answer a discussion question on gross income, you must break the answer down into the different components and apply the information that was given in the question to each component. So we're not going to deal with total amount of cash or otherwise, because that in most cases is quite obvious whether it the question complies to those components. So we're looking at received by or accrued to, and the court cases Underlying that component is the MP Finance Group case. There was unilateral taking or stealing of money, which was held that it was re received by the taxpayer and it's taxed for income tax purposes. In the Geldenhuis case, 
the principle was that it had to be received for your own benefit or on your own behalf. And in the people's stores case, the principle was that you must become entitled to that receipt or accrual. And in the Moy case, the principle is you must become unconditionally entitled to the accrual or receipt. So if there's a condition, it will only accrue or be received when that condition is met. And the Witwatersrand rant case, it must be in your favour. So if one of those apply, then it would have accrued or been received. Okay, then receipts of a capital nature, there it was the Fisser case, the tree versus the fruit principle lay down. So the tree can be a taxpayer has a second house which he rents out to receive rental income. So the house will be the tree, the capital, and the fruit will be the rental income. Then capital in nature can be quite difficult to determine whether it's capital or not. So there have been a couple of tests that are also, um, factors that have been established, subjective and objective factors that must be taken into account to determine capital or revenue. Then the subjective factors will be looked at first. And those are the intention of the taxpayer and the case there's the trust bank case and whether there was a change in intention from capital to revenue there's the richmond estates case dot natal estates Berea west estates and where they mixed in intentions the levy and the glass cases so sometimes if there's a mixed intention the receipt or accrual can be apportioned into capital and revenue. Then the intention in the case of a company will, is the Boyson's estate case, Natal estate's case, lays proprietary mines, and then establishing the person's true intention, the Milan case. So you must go have a look at all these cases and at least read through them and remember what the principles are there in that was established in those cases then there's a whole lot if the subjective factors do not indicate whether it's capital or revenue they will also be looked at objective factors and here's a whole list of them manner of acquisition the manner of disposal the period for which the asset was held continuity that is how often did the taxpayer deal in these type of transactions, but that's also not a deciding factor, but they will look at that. And then the taxpayer's occupation and activities, whether there was any change in the ownership of the asset, the nature of the asset that was sold, the reason for the receipt, legal nature of the transaction, operation of the business, in carrying on a scheme of profit making. If it's a scheme of profit making, then it will be revenue, the age of the taxpayer, activities of the taxpayer, accounting treatment of the transaction and the purpose of a legal person. So you must go look whether any of these objective factors would apply in the question. And if it does, you must address the ones that do apply in your answer. Can we quickly look at an example? Sample PDY Limited is a South African company that sells contemporary art. Samples financial year ends on 28 February and on 25 February they sold an artwork worth 10,000 Rand to an advertising company and the advertising company purchased the artwork to hang it in the reception area and instead of paying cash for the artwork the advertising company offered sample and advertising campaign that's also worth 10,000 rand 
And on 26 February, Sample accepted the advertising campaign instead of cash. So this is otherwise. And the campaign would consist of 10 monthly advertisements in a local newspaper commencing during March. So that would be during, it would commence during the next following tax year. So the required is discussed with the receipt of the advertising campaign would constitute gross income of sample as defined in the Income Tax Act for the year of assessment 28 February. So the solution there you see you break up your answer into the components. So it's in the case of a resident, the amount in cash or otherwise, and then you apply the question to your answer. Sample is a resident company and there was an amount received otherwise than cash. They received the advertising campaign of 10,000 Rand and then received by our crew to such a resident and sample received the advertising campaign or was entitled to the advertising campaign. So it has accrued before they received the benefit of the advertising campaign during the year of assessment. So the artwork was sold in, on 25 February and Sample accepted the advertising campaign instead of cash on the 26th of February, so it happened during the year of assessment. And excluding receipts or accruals of a capital nature, so sample, Sample's business is the selling of artwork, so they did sell artwork as part of their trade, so this will not be of a capital nature, but revenue. That's the fruit. So the conclusion is that the requirements, all the requirements of the gross income definition have been met and therefore the amount of, or the advertising campaign's value of 10,000 Rand will be included in gross income during the current year of assessment. So that concludes this presentation. Thank you.